Hello everyone, my name is Lorthorn and welcome to How to Vampirism, the Lords update. Now that is not an official update name, but that's why I'm calling it because it's appropriate. This is a follow-up video to the original How to Vampirism because the game has updated. So only new information is going to be covered here. If you want to know more about how to do basic stuff in vampirism, then go to that video. It will be linked in the description. So vampirism has updated and there's been a few changes in it. One of the big things I noticed right away is that the stake looks a lot prettier now. It's got a little bit of work put into it. It doesn't just look like a stick of wood. It's actually a pointy stick of wood. Now some other things I have noticed, which is now with the altar, besides the normal requirements, you can actually put in the max purity blood and still start at level one. So as long as you just have good enough purity, you can continually level up, which I think is a very nice added feature. Also, you can have all the altar set up at the beginning and they will be able to just do the leveling stuff for you. There's also a little bit of a change in just the animation that it goes up to the pillars now and shoots out a sort of circular beam. So it looks a little different now too, which I think is pretty cool. Now, some of the other big changes I have noticed, these are just changes, not the gameplay stuff, but the outfits look a little bit better than they did. There is a new kind of beacon thingy, which is a black sunscreen beacon. This has to be activated, I suspect, like a normal beacon. That's just a new little item there. The There's a new kind of tree in the vampire forest, which is the bloody spruce sapling, and they create these things here. And there is a new item which you can get as a reward. Now this thing's also a bit odd. It's basically, you know those backpack straws? You like have a backpack full of uh, Gatorade and then you can like suck on it while running? It's basically one of those but for like the blood tank. So you eat on it and it'll take some blood out of the blood tank and fill up your little blood meter there. Now let's get into the meat and the potatoes of the Lord update. One of the big things it has done is made the vampire lords look different. So this is the male vampire lord, and this here is the female vampire lord. So they actually have their own looks now. So there's uh, new vampires that don't look like they're from Skyrim. Now if you place two together, they freak out and ring wings sprout out of their back. This is the same if um, you're near them. Yes, there is new models for the vampire lords, which look really good. But there is more than just being new models for the vampire lords, because you too can become a vampire lord. Now this is done after you've reached the maximum level of vampirism, which is level 14. So once you've reached vampire level 14, what do you do? Well, you go to a vampire-controlled village. In these villages, you'll find wandering about the Vampire Representative. Now these guys will also appear when you take over a village, he'll show up and become a part of the village. And this guy here gives you quests. So he has some basic quests like kitchen utility, which will give you that little feeder adapter, and has requirements. So kill advanced hunters, 10 of them, and give them five gold ingots. Pretty straightforward. If we accept this quest, and we kill this pack of advanced vampire hunters. Now it does appear to be a little bit buggy, so sometimes it won't recognize you've killed a hunter if there's more than one of them in an area, which is rather confusing to me. But we've only got one less to take care of, and he should be dealt with pretty quickly here. Now we go to the vampire representative, and we've completed his quest. We want to have an empty inventory for this. And we go, all right, we've done your quest, and he will give us the feeding adapter which is that little item, so yay. Now he also has some other quests, but the one that we are most interested in is Are You Worthy? And this is how you get a Lord title. So you have to bring him this five peer blood, a whole bunch of gold ingots, have to infect a whole bunch of people with vampirism, and the most difficult one, capture hostile villages, which is three. Now, to do this, they actually have to be villages controlled by vampire hunters, and I don't have any around. But once you do this quest, you will get to the next level. 
There is also a command to become a vampire lord, so we're going to do that. So, we've set her lord level to 1, and now he will give us more quests, which is breaking bones so we can get chainmail, and the next step, which is killing a whole bunch of hunters, bringing a bunch of blood, and getting these requirements. We're going to set our level to the highest lord level, which is 5. Now also, the lord level will set, give you a little name. So I am currently a vampire prince lord level. So now I have done all the quests that you can basically give me, and if I was to do this one, it'd properly go through the rewards, and basically I'm up there in the local community of tasks you can do for vampires. Now, what does being a lord do? Well, it makes you a little bit stronger as a vampire, and it uh, helps you with one of the most difficult mechanics in the game. So one of the things you can get from these guys if you complete their quests is the vampire minion binding. Now, this thing is really confusing and frustrating to actually use properly. So allow me to try to show how it works. Now, the idea behind this bind talisman is you come across a vampire that is weaker than you, and you can bind him into being your minion. However, in practice, it is not that simple. For one, you need to find a large abundance of vampires, which usually spawn in a vampire forest. They're not at the moment, and so we're just going to appreciate the new flower models. I think they look not as good, but I like that they spawn in groups. That looks quite pretty. If we can actually find a vampire that's not a vampire lord, perhaps this guy, you right-click on them, and more often than not, the vampire will be too strong for you. We got lucky this time, so now this one shall serve me forever, and we've got ourselves a new vampire minion. The Vinion is a little bit smaller than normal vampires, but most of them are just too strong to bind. So basically, once you get the minion binding tool, you have to run through a forest, tapping every vampire you can see, until you eventually you find one that is weak enough for your control. Now these guys are kind of interesting. They have their own whole list of things they can do. Um, they have a group of commands, so they can follow you. So if I walk off, he'll go, oh! Hello, my lord. He can be told to stay here, so he will never move from the spot. We could say, defend this area. And he'll attack anything that's dangerous here. We could tell him to uh, defend the lord. So now he will follow after me and try to defend me. He's like, oh no, you're getting attacked, I'll defend you. And uh, he has a little power called collect blood. Now I'm going to send him off to collect blood, and he's going to teleport off to go do some blood collecting and I will try to find another vampire to bind so I can continue with the rest of the vampire stuff. Okay, we got this guy here, excellent. So you interact with them with a right click. There's also another way to interact with them, which is you hold down G, that should be the base setting. You can go into the config and you can give general commands to all your minions. So you can call all your minions, you can call a single one. You can respawn ones that have been killed. You can tell them to collect blood, defend the area, follow, that sort of thing. So you can give general commands. Now, there's a few other little interactions with the minions. So one of the other rewards you get from the fellow is a vampire minion upgrade. So with this, you can level up your minions different levels. So this one, you can level him up twice. Now he's stronger, but it no longer works on him. So you have to give him the gold upgrade, and then you can give him the diamond one. So these are gotten as rewards from the vampire representative for doing stuff for him. To give your minions stuff, as you see his equipment slots here, you give him a sword here, now he has our sword. We can deck him out in his inventory with armor. Now you may be wondering what's this all about? Well, your minion also has stats you can upgrade. So you can increase his inventory size with one of the upgrades. You can give him more health, make him hit harder, but there is a limit to how many level up points he has. So. You can only max out two of the skills, then you won't have anything left for anywhere else. There is also a button to change your minion's appearance. Now you can give him your appearance, which is just a little bit creepy, so we're not going to do that. But we can say B type 2, B type 4. You can also say ignore global commands, so he will never teleport to us if we summon all. And we should have enough time go by. If we do call all, then this guy here, 
Oh, he didn't get any yet. But they actually will collect blood balls for you. I guess he has to be uh, set off a little bit longer. So we're going to uh, give this guy the command to collect blood. And this guy the command to collect blood as well. Now, on the note of the appearances, you may notice that I don't look freaking ugly. So, one of the big things that was added is if we go into survival mode here, when you're a vampire, it will change your appearance. However, now, there's this lovely little button here, which you can change how it affects your appearance. So you can choose your eyes, so you can go, I want really weird low down eyes, but that doesn't match mine. Oh, that dot's a little too low. Ah, there we go. Bam, red eyes. And then you can also choose a fang type. So the base one gives me this bloody mustache, which is ugly. But I could go with this pure white mouth, which is like, oh, now I'm a Santa Claus. Oh, giant screaming face. So you can mess with your appearance, which I think is excellent. Now you also can uh, actually toggle your powers as well from this menu by clicking on this little toggle gear. Now the Vampire Lord doesn't give you any new skills, but they have revised the little looks of the skills here. So a quick little note, someone asked me, how do I find vampire castles? They're not a thing yet, I don't know if they'll ever be a thing. But you can find them by making your own. That is the only way. It's a block that it does not naturally spawn in the world, you have to make it. There's a whole recipe for it which is combined the vampire stone and vampire orchids in convoluted ways and then you can get dark stone by combining it with dyes and stuff. But to get a vampire castle you have to make your own, you cannot find them. So we're going to call all, hello, and yeah, see, they've collected some blood balls for you. So you can basically become a lord and get your minions to get you blood now, which I think is really cool. So if you go back to being a normal human, it'll also get rid of your minions and your ability to summon them. So your minions are now gone. We're going to move on to the vampire hunter side of things, which just has almost the exact same as the vampires. Now, the vampire hunters have a very similar representative. They have the hunter representative, and he has a quest which is also very similar, which is capture hostile villages and are you worthy? He also trade you to give you cool items and various other things. But you can take up his quest too if you want to. Now, to get minions, you need to be a lord, so we're going to do that. Now we're Hunter Lord level 5, and they actually have a different set of names for their Hunter Lords. Have Lieutenant, Captain, Major, Colonel, and Brigadier, or Brigadier. Now for a Vampire Hunter to get minions, he has to give them this gear bag, which can be gotten as a reward from the Vampire Hunter representative. However, these guys are too reputable for me to get them in my service. And vampire hunters are a little hard to find as they don't all congregate in one big old forest. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we got a vampire hunter in our service. So he also has his own level ups. And to increase his gear, there is these gear levels. Which you can give him, very similar to the vampire hunter. So if we give him the full shebang and then level him up, he too can be... Better, so we can give him resource efficiency, inventory size, maybe a little bit of damage here. And he has pretty similar uh, commands, except instead of collecting blood, he will collect resources for us. Now we can give him vampire hunter gear and deck him out with it so he'll look all cool. He also has uh, skin settings. He too has uh, the same problem, which is if you stop being a vampire hunter, then he will disappear. Now, you can also bring him back to life. I guess it's some other way to do it. But gathering resources, he'll just go off and mine, get you iron, gold, that sort of thing. And that is how you get those guys and equip them. Now, you can't have both at the same time. You can only have uh, hunter minions or vampire minions. And you can't be a lord at the same time. See... If I do the command for Lordship, I'm a Lord level 5, that just makes me a level 5 Hunter Lord. I can't be a Vampire Hunter Lord and Lord. And you just equip them with a right click, command them with G, get back here. He hasn't gone us anything yet. We can also equip him with an axe if we want to. And that is the Lord's update. Gives you new minions, there's a few changes to the way blocks work. And 
They're a little confusing to work with. The quests are a bit difficult from a representative, but probably if you're if you're committed and you're at your point where you're already a level 14 vampire or vampire hunter, then you're probably strong enough to just go out in the world and start freeing these people from their oppressive overlords. And you can get yourself a cute little minion like this guy here. Oh, look at him, he's the adorable. When you convert a city, it will give you the type of representative that's needed when you are at um, the correct level. I don't know if you have to be level 14. I think you actually don't, but you just can't do the Are You Ready Yet quest. So you maybe can do like lesser quests, but I don't think you can do the big quest. And that is How To Vampirism, the Lords update. That was the update, that was all the new things, the new looks for the Vampire Lords, a few new items. So yeah, um, I hope you found that educational and useful in some way. If there's any other mod you would like me to do how to on or a guide let me know this is not restricted to minecraft i am willing to, i am willing to try to um figure mods out in other video games as well if you so want me to give me a challenge and i will see what i can do so yeah um just have yourself a wonderful day um if you're watching this when it comes out then merry christmas that is only appropriate because of the time it came out in and, uh, yes, I'll catch you all next time. So until then, goodbye. Oh yeah, and if you want to see more tutorials I do, or other kinds of videos I do, you can subscribe and get notifications. But you don't have to, because I only do a tutorials about maybe once every two weeks, sometimes once in a week. But yeah, if you're only interested in that, you can like just come and check them out then. Or if you're only interested in specifically vampirism, that's fine too. But just spread the knowledge, spread the love, and be cool. Okay, catch you all next time. Goodbye.